They are quite easy to catch, these tiny creatures that live by their millions in marshes and ponds. They are just big enough for you to see, but with a microscope you'll get a much better view of them, and because they're always on the hop, they're called water fleas. This type of water flea lives down in the mud at the bottom of the pond. It has a double shell, rather like a mussel. Out of the shell come feathery limbs which wave wildly about, partly to move their owner along and partly to sweep up food. Halfway up, in the middle waters of the pond, you can catch the water flea called Cyclops. Like the fairy tale giants of the same name, it has one eye right in the middle of its forehead. And when it's good, it's very, very good, though most people think it always looks horrid. That is Mr. Cyclops. And this is Mrs. Cyclops, rather more leisurely, probably because she has to take the Cyclops family along behind her in two egg cases. In the water, just under the surface, moves the crystalline water flea. If you look carefully at this queer creature, you can see from its shape that it is really a distant cousin of the crabs and lobsters, and that there is quite a strong family likeness. Here is a long-tailed water flea, who also lives on the surface of the water, but only where it is comparatively clear and clean, as it is in ponds and big reservoirs. In this close view, you get a good idea of his general and generous outline. Very like him, but without his long tail, is the ordinary water flea. These lively little creatures swarm about in all kinds of water. They are always on the move, and because they travel about so much, other smaller creatures use them as a kind of omnibus service and get around by hanging on to them. Here is a poor cyclops almost unable to move about because it is so laden with uninvited passengers, strap hanging all over its body, and none of them dreaming of paying any fare. But this common water flea has persuaded these unwanted hangers-on to fasten onto its feelers only and to leave its body and legs free. In this way, the feelers are made large and bushy and are turned into very powerful instruments for swimming, as well as becoming rather beautiful, like two waving plumes. Here's a group of water fleas with their feelers thick with passengers. The way in which they use these passengers to make their feelers more efficient for swimming is a first-class example of making a virtue of necessity. The water fleas are useful scavengers, for they eat up decaying plants of all kinds, sweeping little bits of dead vegetable stuff into their mouths with their feelers. Here you see a close-up view of the mouth, with a whole meal of little scraps of food being swept up round it. And there's a bit going in now. This dark mark down the middle of the flea, here, is the food canal. And as the creature is almost transparent, it is quite possible with a powerful microscope to watch it in the process of digesting its dinner. Here, in the middle of the flea's back, is the heart, beating steadily and vigorously to pump the colourless blood all over the active little body. As the flea doesn't seem to have many emotions, we can't show you its heart missing a beat. Like its cousin Cyclops, the common water flea has in the middle of its forehead only one eye. But what an eye! It is very complicated and worked by a whole set of special muscles. The flea is rather proud of its profile, and much prefers to be photographed like this, sideways. But if you can coax it round to face the camera, it reveals itself as a one-eyed monster, quite as horrible as any that Sinbad the sailor ever encountered on his famous voyages.
Here, under the shell, the female water flea carries her eggs about. In this place of safety, the young fleas develop. While still immature, they have two eyes. You can see the two black specks. And this has led scientists to believe that originally, grown-up water fleas must have had two eyes as well. But now, before their owner hatches out, the two eyes will merge into one. When the little creatures are ready to tackle the world, they leave the safety and protection of the maternal shell. All these young fleas are female, and each one is capable of producing, by her own unaided efforts, a similar family of females. All the spring and summer, while food is plentiful, the water flea world remains a world of mothers and daughters and granddaughters, all one sex. Then, when winter is approaching, the water fleas decide it's time to produce some sons. And sons they produce, as well as daughters. Here is an elusive male. He's a jolly little fellow, rather smaller than his sisters, and is a regular flea, very jerky in his movements. He mates with the females of his own generation and each of his wives produces a single pair of eggs instead of the usual large family. These two eggs are covered with a special thickening of the shell, something like a saddle. The saddle, as you can see here, gets thicker and darker and at length it is quite black. Then the female casts off her eggs and saddle together. They lie all the winter at the bottom of the pond, the saddle of shell protecting the eggs throughout the cold weather against any damages that might be caused by freezing. Until, in the spring, the eggs hatch out again into lady water fleas who produce more daughters. And once more, until the autumn, the pond becomes for the water fleas a paradise of eaves with no adams. And, incidentally, provides very little humans with very cheap aquariums.